Ah, welcome back to the Boy Time channel. Today, Portis Head, Dummy, Wheel from Forever Ago. Ooh. Not exciting. It would have been funny, though. <laughs> I feel like we've been getting a lot of goods. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, what do you got? I think we're going to start off with Portis Head, Dummy. Ah, we're back. We're In back. 2024, year of our Lord. Uh, took a little hiatus. We're back. Uh, new place, new face, head, specifically. Um, and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm bald now. Yes. Um, you also see some new overlays and stuff, so hopefully you like those. Should clean everything up a little bit. Um, but we're back. Uh we got some changes, We've got a couple of new things going on. We'll explain those probably at the end of the video, like we usually do when we start rambling on for five or ten minutes after we do the album, because that's how mm -hmm. we do. Um, but this was my pick from forever ago, so yeah, uh, we're picking it back up. Um, gonna be starting the year with a bang, another classic. Um, I seem to pick those a lot, so I swear that won't be all this year. But uh, I'm super excited to get into this thing. I've been wanting to listen to this album for years, and I just haven't yet. Um, I think, so this is trip hop. Uh, I think the only kind of exposure to trip hop we've had is Blur's 13 had a couple of songs. Mm. I think Trailer Park specifically on that album was very trip hoppy. Um, okay. But this record is the one that kind of uh, popularized the, the genre. Uh, we know Beth Gibbons from the, the Kendrick Lamar song. I um, do know that. The song I can't listen to. I've heard it like twice. It's very fun. It's song. very fun. Um, and... We got boy time timing, like always. Uh, Beth Gibbons just announced she has a solo record coming out this year. Uh, oh, which okay. Is, I saw that this morning, and I'm like, this happens every single time we like pick up an artist. Um, it's true. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if I have anything else to really add. Um, I think we can just kind of jump into this thing and see what's going on. Sure. Let's do it. Alrighty. First track is M Mysterons. Mysterons. I don't know. Mr. Ron. Mr. Ron. Mr. Ons. That was pretty G dang epic. Real. Um Yeah. No, I, I, I really like that. I mean I knew next to nothing about this album going into it. So I didn't really know what to expect, but I definitely was not expecting like a Trent Reznor on a David Fincher score, <laughs> you know? It's like so edgy and just like dripping with atmosphere. Um but yeah, no, I loved it. Like, um, and you know, maybe be like against my type because I don't usually like 
songs that just kind of have a really long instrumental. Mm. No, maybe sometimes depends on the sometimes that's I suppose. yeah sometimes, but no, I just that one had a really nice groove to it. I felt like Robert Pattinson's Batman, you know, mm, really yes. cool guy. <laughs> yeah, something in the something, way, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it felt really cool. No, yeah, that was fantastic. Um, I I kind of had like. I knew what the vibe of this record was. I haven't heard a single song from it, but I kind of know the vibe that we're going for here. Um, I love how dark and eerie it is. Um, the mixing is really cool because I'd expect like we've done dream pop records and stuff where everything is just super watery and smooth. This one has like hard textures. The vocals are not blended into this instrumental. It's kind of like its own thing. Um, and it sounds like a water level. We love water level music here. I think yes. this whole album's going to be water level music. Um, but really fantastic the drumming is fantastic as well it's like very kind of skeletal but you build on these kind of atmospheric elements you have this like all i could vision is like a drop of water in a puddle where all these kind of like weird synths come in and kind of disorient you for a little bit um yeah yeah haven't picked up anything vocally i'm just like letting this thing take me so far um but it definitely has this kind of like dark kind of ominous vibe to it um I, I was thinking in my head like this this is sour and then the next song is sour time so it kind of took the words from me but oh it does sound kind of sour in a very pretty mm -hmm. way um yeah. sour patch kids maybe um but yeah very good uh track two sour times This is the desert level. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Billy Woods beat. <laughs> it does kind of. Sour times. That one was really good too. Like, so far, this has been just a, an incredibly visual record. Yes. Like, I keep getting, like, when the song first started, I'm like, oh, this kind of sounds like how Nighthawks makes me feel. That famous <laughs> painting. Like, oh, this is nice. But then as it kept going, it was like, like scenes of like, you know, in like an old noir movie where mm -hmm. like they go to like a burlesque show and then there's like the one singer that's, you know, dancing and singing a song like this sounds like something that that they would sing. Um, and I'm like, wow, like there's just so much atmosphere. Like, I think we're just going to be saying that the whole time. Yeah. That just like it's so dark and edgy. It feels like a noir movie. So. Mm -hmm. It's a big plus for me. I love those. Yeah, no, so. I like the first song, but this was like completely like took it over completely. Like this is borderline masterpiece. I think um, mm. we didn't have a lot of jazz in the first song. The jazz started coming in here like an old dusty jazz. jazz club. Um, yeah. Straight like Angelo Badalamenti vibes here. Like it's, it's yeah. very Lynchian when it gets to like that bass line and you get this really cool jazz going. Um, I love that they do atmosphere, but they don't overdo it. They're not like saturating the channels too much. It's still very laid back, but it's like, it invites you in. The vocals are like really silky smooth. It's got this very like 
edgy but like weirdly sensual element to all of it um yeah her vocal inflections on here are fantastic i just love the chorus on here um yeah the bass line on this one for sure is a standout but this is a very good start um this is exactly how i would want this record to sound in my head when i was like hmm i want to do this record a lot but i don't want to listen to it yet and this is kind of what i was envisioning like this is kind of like dark jazz like someone could rap over this song that's the cool part too Absolutely. with this trip hop it's like i could think of four different rappers that would do fantastic <laughs> on that beat <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah great start all righty strangers track three Strangers. My mic was muted. Oh my god. Uh, that, that was a good one. Um, I don't think it's as high for me as Sour Times or Mister Mr. Ron's is, but uh, man, it, this is just a vibe. Mm-hmm. I love this. Um, I feel like the coolest guy on earth listening to this. I know. I know. I can't wait to go to school tomorrow with my hood up, <laughs> and I have Sunglasses my corded earbuds. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the coolest guy in school. I don't go to school, but if I did, I would be pretty cool. And then when I'm when I'm sitting in my desk, I would have the phone up so that people Ooh, could see what I'm here. listening like, to. Back. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, this guy's listening Yo. to Portishead. This guy's really cool. <laughs> That's what this makes me feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one was also really good um i love how like not abrasive but like punchy it is um again it's like i expected a more like watered down really smooth kind of like treasure cocktail twins experience but i'm liking that there's a knock to it um it, it keeps it still really cool and still atmospheric but it's not too it's still very grounded um i'm loving the vocal inflections i feel like there's like a mixture of like there's like an r&b vocal element where it's like very soulful but then I'm also yeah. getting like Chelsea Wolf, where it's like power mm-hmm. and just like this kind of weirdly ghastly like ghost element to it or something like a evanescence even. Um, I'm just yeah. getting like very little of that. It's a really cool mixture. Um, yeah. Very, very, very good. All righty. It could be sweet. Track four. Could it be? This is the sweet to the sour. Oh. This is the dance song. <laughs> Play this in the club. <laughs> the blow out your speakers and your Toyota Camry song. <laughs>
It could be sweet. That one was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> it's kind of hard to talk about. This is one of those records where yeah. it's like <laughs> it's all just kind of mellow. We're kind of just chilling. We're having a nice time, but it's like it's edgy. I feel like a cool guy. I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> I like it. No, yeah, it's it's fantastic. I think the vocals on this track are the best that they've been so far. Um, man, the the pre-chorus and the chorus of this one is fantastic. I love the lyrics on this one. Um, oh, so so good. Like, there's this real soulful element that I was talking about in the last track. Is like this is this whole track. This could be an R and B song from the '90s. It's just like kind of flipped and has this really eerie kind of atmospheric edge to it but it's even got like the you know crazy r&b like drum pattern that you'd see on something like full moon um but it's yeah. like kind of subdued they put it as like a sub bass element and it adds a really nice texture in the headphones um her accent on the song is kind of crazy too like I, she was like pronouncing things really strange and then like i was reading on genius that like it's a certain accent um oh. and it's the just the way she pronounces certain things was really cool because she like would get low for like an o and like kind of open up wide for it it was really weird mm. um but it had a really cool dynamic to it i was just like oh is she like intentionally doing that or is that just her accent coming out <laughs> so that was cool um yeah that one's one of my favorites that was really good mm-hmm. all right wandering star track five <laughs> Wandering Star. I think that one might be one of my favorites, if not my actual favorite. Uh, I just really loved how like stripped back that one was. Um, and I know I said it was, I was already against tight, but man, I just loved that like two minutes of just chilling with the mm-hmm. instrumental, just letting it ride. Like such, such a nice vibe. Like, Man, I didn't expect this to be so chill. I'm like so <laughs> relaxed right now. I was so on edge. Uh, you know, I was so nervous. Spooky, you know, we had been gone for so long. And I was like, touch. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> but now I'm so chill. 
I'm not going to mess anything up ever. It's a good album to come back to, I suppose. I suppose so, yeah. Good thing it's not Cemetery right off the bat. That would have been rough. That would have been rough. Yeah, this one was great. Uh, I was immediately about to say, did DJ Premier work on this? Uh, But no, they were just really inspired by DJ Premier. So you got a DJ Premier uh, record scratch in this like really weird, (laughs) winding, uh, you know, dark track um which is really cool i really enjoyed it um this reminded me a lot of the blur 13 album we listened to um this kind of very downtrodden like eerie depressed kind of vibe but it's like you get the funky record scratches and stuff and it's like a really like weird contrast um i know we felt that record was like kind of making fun of itself at times um it would be like the darkest song you've ever heard and then i do like a funky little breakdown um yeah. I was kind of getting the same vibe with this one here. But yeah, just the, the solo of the record scratching at the end, and they were like building onto it with these different elements. It was a really, really nice like play of texture. Um, but yeah, there is not a miss so far. We're about halfway no. through. Alrighty. It's a fire. Track six. Fire. This track is not on the vinyl copy of the album. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. These dreams have passed me by because we a fire i have mixed feelings on it's a fire (laughs) i liked it um and i think it has my favorite drum beat Mm -hmm. the doom cha 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 that one i like that one uh anytime it's in a song it's kind of an incident sheet code for me just has my favorite little groove in there but I absolutely hate the electric organ and <laughs> having it be so prominent in the mix. I'm like, Oh, I hate this. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, I just, Oh, I do not like that sound. <laughs> so, uh, I think the song by itself, I think is fine. It's just, that's just a me thing. Yeah. But, that's funny. Cause I love it for the exact reason that you hate it. Uh, oh, good. Uh, I don't know. I never expected like me to be a fan of the organ. I don't have like any religious trauma associated with an organ of any sort. I don't so maybe I, I know, but some people probably <laughs> do. Um, <laughs> since you know, you see an organ in certain places, um, Catholic churches. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I love that song. Um, it reminded me a lot of something off of Spirit of Eden from Talk Talk because they use that electric organ in the same kind of way. But this is like a very minor key version of that, which is really cool. Because, like, I love the organ because you get that natural reverb, and they take so long on one chord. So when they go through the whole chord resolution, like, they, like, kind of mess with you all throughout it. Because you think you know what the note's going to be, they hit you with something different. It's just a really cool thing in my head where I'm like, ooh, that's unexpected. Um, And I love just, like, there was that one note that came in that was louder than the other ones, and it just kind of filled the headphones with, like, this warm kind of fuzzy noise. Um, I think that was a perfect backdrop for her vocals on this one. Uh, yeah, I might have an unpopular opinion, but this is like one of the best songs on here. It might be, you know, tied for number one for me. Um, oh, okay. 
for it not being on the vinyl release for some reason. I'm not sure what that is. But, all right. Uh, my favorite Linkin Park track, Numb. Yes. I love Linkin Park. They're my favorite. <laughs> Trash can lid. (laughs) (laughs) More organ. Yeah, but it's hiding back there. True. I don't know if I like it more than the Linkin Park song, but I like it. <laughs> I, I don't even know if I've listened to that whole Linkin Park song. Uh, no, I, I like that one quite a bit. Um, it had a real kind of like homemade feel. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was that that tin can drum or whatever, but then it also sounded like dishes were like rattling around in the background. I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. It's kind of like. You know, when they're, they're like break down a Phineas beat or something and it's mm-hmm. like, hey, there was like a traffic light or something that he sampled for like no reason. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of the vibe I got from this where they're just kind of taking a bunch of sounds and making a beat with it, which I am a fan of. Yeah, I love stuff. I'm Stella. a fan of that because it was so like hard to do that back then. You can't just like oh, yeah. grab a, you know, whatever dot MP4 off of freesounds.com and put it in your beat record you it like, off your phone yeah you gotta do field recordings and stuff with like actual yeah. equipment um which i think more artists should do obviously it's more work but it's like the, the effects come across a lot better because you do things that you wouldn't expect like yeah the making the, the, the drum sound like a tin can just to have it is really cool um mm-hmm. again like i love the sound of just like very warm grainy it feels like an old hip-hop record like on vinyl where you get that nice warmth coming from it um yeah it's just a really really like comforting and cool uh palette to it i love the ending of this i love having an electric organ on one part of the song and then like a record scratch breakdown on the other half um that was really cool and it was like some like abrasive stuff going on at the end um yeah uh i'm not picking up my lyrics like at all on this record that's gonna be further down the road i feel like i'm just like I turn the song on and I'm like, I'm the coolest person to ever live yeah. for like, you know, five minutes. And then I'm like, Ooh, that was really good. Let's do it again. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, lyrics I'll probably talk about in the retrospective in a while. So don't expect any of that because I'm just like getting lost in the sounds of this. So of course me too. Very good. Alrighty. Roads track eight. <laughs> Yeah. 
Rhodes. That was nice. Fantastic. I like that. That was like if Portis had made the soundtrack to a spaghetti western. <laughs> it was <laughs> rad as hell. Like it was like you know that electric guitar got that reverb all the way up, and there was like a string section towards mm. the end. I'm like, this is like some rad ass like bounty hunter type <laughs> like we're still a cool guy but now it's just a cool guy a long time ago and we're very sad yes well a sad cowboy <laughs> exactly. you know everyone's favorite archetype the cowboy's plight yeah i loved that that was awesome yeah um i'll throw it out there that's a masterpiece uh gotta do it um yeah that was just every single note was phenomenal i love how like how much emotion and atmosphere you can pull out of so few notes. Like it's just these sustained keyboard notes with this drum pattern. And then you add the orchestra to, to it. But like every single note was just so warm and like all of the texture that comes along with it. And it's vibrating throughout your ears as your vocals is kind of like soaring through. Um, it's just like incredibly desolate feeling, but this instrumental is like a warm hug to accompany it. It's, it is just fantastic. Amazing. Um, I love the cowboy analogy because it is like a very like I'm in this by myself and how kind of everything feel this like lonely and separate. Um, yeah. And just the, the orchestra being perfectly placed on this is just great. You have all of these digital like uh, more electric things going on and then you get this warm string section that comes in. Uh, yeah, that is phenomenal. Alrighty. Pedestal track nine. Pedestal. That one was also pretty nice. Not not as good as the last one, but pretty nice. Um, yeah, I really loved the bass in this one. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how they got it. To, it sounds like an alien bass. It's like, mm -hmm. it was like, had this like weirdo like warble effect to it, which I've never heard before. But I'm also not usually paying this much attention to the bass. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, that one was nice. Real nice. Yeah, I'm glad we went back to jazz. I love the dark jazz sound. You get the trumpet mm -hmm. solo, and then you get the record scratch over the trumpet solo, which is madness. Um, <laughs> I love just, like, how soulful she can make these vocals. It's, like, so slick and smooth, but it's got, like, a lot of personality and attitude to it. Um, yeah. And, yeah, the bass on the song, obviously, was amazing. Um, it, like had that such like a natural reverb it sounded like a stand-up bass almost like the amount of times that was like reverberating it sounded huge um but yeah that one was great like every other song on here but you know i'm just gonna keep repeating the words i guess um yeah well biscuit at track 10 what we actually call this track cookie in the united yes. states yes <laughs> Oh, 
Stranger Things? What? I love that show. was the best ending really when it was just like it's all over now and that's when the fade out starts uh-huh. <laughs> that was just genius funny sorry my internet died for one second oh no i had so much quirky commentary say it again <laughs> okay well i said it was funny in an otherwise spooky track true i frankly not gonna be able to sleep tonight because it's yeah. too scary i felt like i was listening to a clipping record yeah, kind of actually. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Like, man, I, I really liked it. It's just like kind of hard to talk about. Mm-hmm. Like those strings were so spooky. I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> it's just like they were way back there. It was only in the beginning and the end, I think. But it's like I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe it. They're just eerie yeah this is another one where it's like i could see rappers going on top of this like this this instrumental on this track is absolutely like insane um i love how dark it is and the use of the sample in the chorus is fantastic um yeah. that super slowed down reminded me of twin peaks the return david lynch did like a really weird remix of a song and it like slowed yeah. it like way down um it reminded me of that. It's just like a really good use of a sample. I think they put some reverb on it too. We got like this really like echoey effect to it. Um, and it's so cleanly done too. There's no compression whatsoever in there. It just sounds really, really good. Um, yeah. yeah, the textures on this thing just like they tickle your ears. They're warm. They're like just, it's a full body of sound. Um, and again, it's just like this dark kind of jazz type thing. Um, this is definitely gonna be a record where, like, on further listens, you're gonna pick up on a lot more. There's a whole lot here. Um, it's a very chill record, but the details are just killer. Um, so I think I'll have a lot more to say on this in the retrospective uh, whenever that comes up. But we got one more song. Yeah, sometime soon. Uh, last track, Glory Box. <laughs>
know that that switch is exactly halfway through this record. What? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> now it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Glory box. That was really nice. I like that one quite a bit. That was like the first one where like the lyrics were kind of popping out mm -hmm. to me. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I feel like it's kind of hard not to pay attention to the lyrics in that one. Um, which, you know, I, I think, yeah, just kind of like, kind of like flipping the whole gender role thing, you know? Uh, I don't know. I'm not the one that talks about that. You're going to talk about it. Uh, I just liked that it sounded so cool. As always, I love a good bass walk down. Um, for some reason, I was getting Western vibes on this one, too. Even though I was I like racking my brain trying to think of something that sounds like <laughs> it, and I couldn't. So, I don't know. Maybe I've just been watching too many Westerns recently. But, uh, plug the podcast. And then, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I really liked it. Uh, you can break it down better than I can. Break it down. Uh, yeah, that was that was a masterpiece. Uh, I gotta give to that one and that one. I, I feel like it's obvious. Uh, that was the standout of the record at the end. I love that powerful of a statement to close out the record. Not only do you have this incredibly like empowering like free message at the end of the record of like breaking free from this old traditional norm and getting to be like. I'm my own woman. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not going to mess with, you know, how society has raised us or whatever. Uh, breaking free from that. And then you have the electric guitar coming oh, yeah. in. You, It's like not really prominent on the record at all. Last song hit you with a guitar solo and it is just absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, I love just like the sassiness, the attitude, the confidence. Um, you get the bass walk down with the guitar, and you still get a little bit of a breakdown at the end, um, kind of tying it cohesively with the record a little bit. But yeah, that's a, that's a perfect song right there. I would say the second yeah. on this record. Um, but that's the album. That was fantastic. Uh, wow. This is going to take more listens. Um Absolutely. I think as a first reaction, it was still really, really fantastic. But I really want to dive into this, uh, not only lyrically, but I feel like there's a lot of like, there's a lot of uh, things you can appreciate when you're not on camera listening to a record like this, I think. I think this is one of these where you sure. do repeat listens and you hear these different uh, grooves and elements to the songs that you don't really pick up on the first listen. But just sonically, it is just phenomenal. Um, it's a perfect blend of like, jazz elements hip-hop elements you have some like dream poppy elements with it um and the vocalist is fantastic so uh yeah amazing great start to the year uh, i love this thing yeah no this is a great start to boy time season two is that what season we're calling three it? i don't know season three I, <laughs> this is it's a long know, season one <laughs> 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 um yeah no i i really liked it i feel like it's kind of hard uh, at this point to like pick out tracks because mm -hmm. it is such a vibe it, it was kind of giving me like war on drugs vibes just edgier in that mm -hmm. sense where it's like man i don't i can't tell you a single to war it. on drugs yeah. so i just play <laughs> yeah. the whole record exactly. and then just jam out this is kind of the same thing where like i feel like you know once we're listening to the whole record all the way through this is gonna be just so chill mm -hmm. so cool like this is yeah man i just loved it it's so cool we get to spin a wheel yo i love the wheel my god wheel time wheel time we're back we're back at the wheel nothing has changed in this department true same old wheel same old wheel. i could change the logo in the wheel but i kind of like the novelty of it <laughs> I do too. Ooh, we got a meh. Okay. We got a meh. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get to my wheel. I was looking through the fan stuff. Um, oh, we got some okay. good stuff in here. We do got some good stuff. 
Got a lot of good stuff, actually. Oh, boy. But I think I had this one picked out from before we uh, took our little hiatus. We're going to do some emotion heap. Let's go. Speak for yourself. Let's do it. All right. Next week, emotion heap. Speak for yourself. Yeah. Uh, Great record. Yeah, you've heard it. I have not. I've heard one song, actually, and it's a masterpiece. Oh, I love so. Yeah, I know. I love this. <laughs> the whole thing is fantastic. I'm so excited. So. Join us next time for that. We do have some changes. You might have seen a glimpse of it in there. It's a little messy in that dock with all of our stuff. Um, there, there. We we function differently in this kind of wheel series that we do. I do all albums that I have not listened to, and he has a lot of albums that he's listened to, but I have not heard. So we're going to do a thing once every month where we alternate. Someone picks an album that they want to you know, either revisit, or for me, it's like I want to talk about it long form on the channel and then show this guy because he probably hasn't heard it. Because um, I got a lot of comments about Godspeed and Talk Talk. It's like those are all records I love and have heard, but I would love to do videos on them. So we're yeah, going to yeah. do that once a month. We'll be kind of alternating that. Um, so that'll be a new thing. Uh, we're also going to be doing more new albums that came out uh, this year. So we got MGMT coming up. Uh, we got one more album from Tapir that just came out. Uh, we're going to do that one probably after Emotion Heap. Um, so yeah. expect more new release videos. I've been wanting to do some of those. Um, so a couple of changes, uh, but, you know, still the same old, same old for the most part. Um, but I think that's it. Good to be back. Yeah. I'm to edit again. Yay. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm excited too. I well, I'm excited for you to edit. That's mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, no, it's good to be back. I think for that series, it's probably going to be just you showing. Uh, yeah, probably because you already kind of do that. <laughs> that's almost exclusively what I do. Yeah. I frankly, I'm too impatient, and I <laughs> I'm like I need mainly because I kind of like cycle through stuff kind of fast. Yeah. So I'm like I need something new, and then I go out. And I find something, and then it's like my new thing. And I'm like, okay, add it to the wheel. I'll show Babby. And then like six months later, it's not in my rotation anymore. And I'm like, oh boy, now I get the show. Yeah. I get to revisit it, and I know that I really like it. Plus, I feel like when when I do some new stuff, you know, I'm not always the best at saying what I like about things. Gotta let it simmer. When, yeah, I gotta let it simmer a little bit. I gotta really pick it apart. I uh, really know what I like and don't like about it. Yeah. So, and I talk about literally every single album I've listened to on the podcast, but not a lot of people listen to the podcast that are over here. So I want to bridge sure. the gap. Plus I'm better at talking about music when I get to physically like listen to the song and then talk about it. It's very sure. hard to do a concise album review when you have to talk about either every single song or no songs. Um, so that's kind of the purpose it'll serve. Plus we'll get, some more of the stuff that I listen to in my own time that we would probably never do a reaction video on. Um, so should be fun, but sure. Yeah. We'll have Bab Jab on more. Hopefully, uh, I know he'll be here for MGMT. You got car seat headrest on your wheel. So once we do that, we'll invite him because he'll know pretty much everything about that and we won't. So yes, but yeah, uh, stay tuned for next week. Uh, we got a podcast. If you want to listen to our podcast, we got some movies, we got some shows, we got some game reviews. Mm -hmm. We did, yeah, we did just do a review of Disco Elysium. So if you are interested in our thoughts on that, check that out. It's its own episode. Yeah, it's two white boys that have a podcast. We talk about pretty much whatever you'd expect two white boys that have a podcast to talk about. So if that you interests you stuff. at all, check yeah. it out. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I got. I completely forgot how we outro these or not outro these. So, um, oh yeah, I, I stare know. at the camera eerily and then I say, bye.